Hi dear students, my dear colleagues and respected viewers. Uh, in my previous video, I was talking about the conversation between Cassius and Casca and how Cassius successfully traps Casca into becoming a conspirator. Casca very openly says that he is not a fleering telltale. When Cassius pricks him, you know, when Cassius pulls Casca's legs by calling him a willing bondman, perhaps I speak this to a willing bondman, says Cassius. What is the meaning of willing bondman? A person who is who willingly surrenders himself as a slave to others. A bondman is a slave. So Casca, Cassius very, very cleverly pulls Casca's legs by calling him a willing one bondman and Casca becomes, you know, angry. And he says, no, 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 you are not speaking to a willing bondman. I am not a fleering telltale. I will not tell these things to anyone. I am one with you. Now I am going to join hands with you in this, you know, honorable, dangerous consequence. Look at the expression here. Shakespeare very beautifully uses. And these words are spoken by Cassius. I am just using this, exp this expression. Honorable, dangerous consequence. Removing Caesar is an honorable thing because by preventing Caesar from becoming a king, in fact they are doing a great service to Rome and to the Romans. So there is honor in killing or assassinating Caesar. What is dangerous? Honorable hyphen dangerous. Dangerous means supposing the conspirators fail in assassinating or killing Caesar, then they will have to face dangerous consequences. They might be killed by the people if they fail to kill Caesar. So he uses very Cassius, very, very beautifully uses this expression honorable, dangerous consequence. If Caesar is assassinated, the consequence will be these conspirators would be called honorable men. And if the conspirators fail in assassinating Caesar, then they will have, the consequence is very, going to be very dangerous. That's why Cassius very beautifully uses, uses this expression, honorable, dangerous consequence. Okay. Hence, Casca readily joins hands with Cassius by telling him that he is not for Julius Caesar but against Julius Caesar because even he doesn't like to be a bondman or a slave to Caesar. When he says that Cassius, I, I think in the previous video I stopped at this. Come to line number 120. Scene 3, Act 1, Scene 3, come to line number 120 and here Casca very beautifully says And I will set this foot of mine as far as who goes farthest. One who goes to the extremes, you know, in uh, displaying courage and bravery and boldness in removing Caesar he would join hands with him. Who says this? Casca. He says, and I will set this foot of mine. That means I will be with that person who goes the farthest. That means that one who is ready to face the death, face death, would be the person who would be going the farthest, you know, in trying to remove Caesar. And Casca says, he will also, you know, set his foot with that person. That means, who else could that be? Cassius. So 
So Casca is ready to join Cassius, thinking that they are doing an honorable work, an honest work. They are doing as if some great service to their country, their country by assassinating Caesar. Casca fails to understand the hidden agenda of Cassius. The jealousy of Cassius for Caesar, you know, Casca fails to notice. Then Casca's, Cassius says, come down to line number 121. Let us understand Cassius's speech. I'll read out the speech, try to follow every line, and then I'll interpret every line in, a, in the simplest possible language. Cassius says, there is a bargain made. Now, know you, Casca. I have moved already some certain of the noble-minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honorable, dangerous consequence. And I do know by this they stay for me in Pompey's porch. And for now, this fearful night, there's no stir of walking in the streets. And the complexion of the element in favor is like the work we have in hand, most bloody, fiery, and most terrible. So let us not waste our time by being exposed to this terrible night. You know, let's go to the Pompey's theater. Let's go to Pompey's porch, Pompey's theater, where the other conspirators are waiting for Cassius. Because they have to plan, it is night, you know. And evil things and devilish things are always done when it is night. And God's work is done only during daytime. This is what everybody firmly believes in. God's work should be done during day night, daytime. And the devilish work and the work of the evil is done only when it is night. And these conspirators are doing a bad thing. That's why they have decided to assemble, you know, in Pompey's theater and plan out as to how they should assassinate Caesar. First point. Second point, they have to decide or they, have, they are coming together in Pompey's theater or coach to go to Brutus's house and meet him and be sure of his support to them. Because mind you, Cassius has already dropped some certain anonymous letters into Brutus's house. As if they are written by the citizens of Rome. Okay, now Cassius does something else. After the conversation between Cassius and Casca is just complete, we find the arrival of another conspirator called Sina. C-I-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Sina is a tall, slim guy, slim man, you know. And when Sina starts walking towards uh, the Pompey towards Pompey's porch, he happens to pass by Cassius and Casca, and Casca is scared because he's not able to notice the figure of Sinna approaching them because it is completely dark. But Cassius notices because Cassius understands that it is Sinna by you know observing his walking style. He says, I know it is Sina, I know by his gait, he says. G-A-I-T, gait means the style of walking, you know. A person's style of walking is called gait. And all these things happen here. So go through this, L let me explain every line to you. Come down to line number 121. Then Cassius says, there is a bargain made, that means you, I'm so happy, Cassius says, I'm so happy that you have joined me in this honorable, dangerous consequence of assassinating Julius Caesar and preventing him from becoming a king. And thereon, 
from becoming a dictator. Now Cassius tells Casca, look at this, now know you Casca. Casca, I want to tell you something. Please, you know, listen to me. Know you Casca. I have moved already. He says, he has already moved. That means he has already encouraged and spoken to some people. He says, I have already moved some certain of the noblest minded Romans. Some individuals, some Romans. So they are, they, these are none other than the conspirators. He says, I have already moved. That means I have already requested. Like I have requested you, Casca. I have already requested some of the no, honest, uh, uh, some of the noblest Romans. And even they are ready to join hands with me to assassinate Caesar. And they are all waiting for me in Pompey's theater. Come, he is calling Casca. He is asking Casca to join him to Pompey's theater wherein, where, where they can meet the other conspirators waiting for Cassius' arrival. Look at this, he says, I have moved already some certain of the, some of these noblest minded Romans. Who are these noblest minded Romans according to Cassius? Those Romans who are willing to remove Caesar from this world, from the face of the earth, as it were. He calls them noblest Romans. Actually, they are not noblest Romans. They are traitors, you know. They are ungrateful people because Caesar has not done any harm to any individual till now. Caesar may be ambitious. Caesar, Caesar's supporters may, you know, may be planning to make Caesar the king. That doesn't mean that Caesar is a bad man. That doesn't mean that Caesar, you know, uh, would become a dictator. But later on, in the second act, in Brutus's soliloquy, soliloquy is a person standing alone and, you know, speaking out his mind loudly, so that the audiences understand what is going on in uh, that particular character's minds, you know, especially Brutus's mind. And Brutus says that the present Caesar is not dangerous. But keeping in mind how Brutus's nature would be changed after he becomes a king, that is more important, he thinks. And if he becomes, he tries to become a dictator, dictator. Because the abuse of power. Supposing I am an ordinary teacher. Supposing you make me an officer, that position of being an officer might get into my head and I might become ambitious and I might misuse the power of being an officer to my personal gain. I don't say everybody does it, but we do not know who does it and who doesn't. You know, you have to give a person a chance. We should not suspect a person that he would become dangerous and therefore kill him now. How can you kill an innocent person thinking that he might become dangerous in future and killing him now is unpardonable, dear friends. Now it is like, you know, it is like crushing, you know, destroying a snake's egg, the egg of a snake. A snake would definitely have poison in its fangs. But what about the egg? There is no harm from a snake's egg. You can keep a snake's egg in your pocket and walk about. Only when the egg is hatched, only when the egg hatches and only when that snake comes out, and that snake will have poison in its fangs 
and you will have to kill that snake thinking that a snake would come out of the egg and to prevent the snake from coming out of the egg if you destroy the egg is it not your foolishness dear friends let the snake come out if it wants to harm us then there is no there is there is you know more important for us to go and go in search of that snake and kill it understood but thinking that the egg would hatch and a poisonous snake snake would come out if you destroy the egg it is your foolishness the same thing happens to caesar caesar is like a snake's egg who is which is not at all harmful and thinking that the position of a king when caesar is made a king that kingly position might you know put some ambition in caesar's mind and that power might make him you know become a dictator and make his people his slave slaves and killing the innocent caesar in the present is like destroying a snake's egg or a serpent's egg which is foolishness and that is what everybody does here look at this cassius says i have moved already some surgeon of the noblest minded romans what are these noblest minded romans going to do to undergo with me he says they are joining with hands with me to do an enterprise to take up this work enterprise to take up this work which has honorable dangerous consequence what is an enterprise of assassinating caesar what else could that be and hence he says and i do know by this by this means by this time of night i do know that they stay for me they are waiting for me all these noblest romans a few of these noblest romans this they, they are nothing they are none other than the conspirators are they noble no they say he says and i do know by this they stay for me in pompey's porch i know they are waiting for me in pompey's theater and for now the hens it is not the right time for you and me to expose ourselves you know to this deadly climate because there is the storm blowing strong winds are blowing across the lightning is striking the earth strongest trees are being uprooted unnatural sights are visible to many hence cassius says for now at this moment this fearful night this night is fearful i have told you of these things this fearful night there is no stir of walking in the streets we shouldn't stay or we shouldn't walk in the streets in this on this fearful night and because look at the sky he shows the sky he shows casca the sky and the sky is cloudy there are dark clouds rain bringing clouds in the sky and the complexion is deadly you know the color of the sky is very dark and he talks about the deadly clouds you know that have completely covered the blue sky to the work they have in hand the work they have in hand is as dangerous as the face of the sky understood that he is he using he is using poetry here it's nothing but shakespeare look at this and the complexion of the element the element is the sky complexion means the color of the sky look at the color of the sky it is so dull and dark and deadly 
because there are rain clouds completely, you know, enveloping the blue sky. He says, the complexion of the element in favor. Favor means the face. Look at the face of the sky there. The color of the face of the sky. The complexion is the color. The element is the sky. Favor is the face. Look at the face of the sky. The color of the face of the sky. It is dull and dark and deadly and dangerous. And it is like the work we have in hand. The color of the face of the sky is as deadly as the work we have in hand. What is that work? Of assassinating Caesar. What is that work? Most bloody. Look at that. The sky is most bloody. The work they have is most bloody. The sky is fiery, very wild and very flaming and very dangerous. And the work they have in hand is also fiery. And the sky is most terrible. And the work they have in hand is also most terrible. So he is comparing the work they have in hand to the color of the face of the sky on that, you know, stormy night. I think you have understood these lines. Let's move on. Then Casca says, Now Casca suddenly sees some figure approaching them. Casca is not able to identify the figure because it is dark. But Cassius understands. Cassius notices that it is the figure of Sinna. The way Sinna walks, that walking style, helps Cassius to identify that it is Sinna. Look at this, Casca is scared because Casca is always scared. Casca is fearful. You know, Casca uh, is afraid of all these uh, disturbances in nature. That's why Casca says, stand closer by me, for here comes one in haste. He says, Cassius, stand closer. Why? Let's hide ourselves in some corner because there is somebody coming in a hurry, in haste, in some hurry, somebody is moving towards us. Let us hide ourselves. Let him not observe us, says Casca. Stand closer, away, for here comes one in haste. Then Cassius says, Oh, it is sin. I don't know him by his gait. It's sin. Don't worry, Casca. It is sinner. I know him by his gait. I know the way he is walking. I know that it is sinner. And he is a friend. He is not an enemy. He is a friend. He is one of the, you know, noblest Romans. He is a friend. Then we have Sinna entry. Enters Sinna. Then Sinna is walking. And Cassius calls him. Sinna doesn't observe these two people. Because Sinna's concentration is on something else. He is moving towards Pompey's theatre. Then suddenly Cassius calls out to him. Cassius says, Sinna. Then Sinna stops. Where haste you to? Where are you going in such a hurry? To which place are you going? Where haste you to? Then Sinna says, To find you? I am going in search of you and I am going slowly towards Pompey's theatre and I am going in search of you to find you out. Suddenly, Sinna notices the figure of Casca and Casca has completely covered his face, you know, with his robe. And Sinna doesn't notice him, identify him. Hence Sinna says something here. Who is that? Battle Simba. To find you out, Sinna says, to find you out. Where, where are you in a hurry going? Ask Cassius. And Sinna says, to find you out. Who is that? Battle Simba, he says. Who is that? Is he Metalus Simba? Here, dear friends, Shakespeare introduces 
the names of the conspirators who are waiting for Cassius in Pompey's theatre to the audiences. He introduces all these new names to the audiences. And the audiences should know that these are the names of the conspirators. This is the technique used by Shakespeare. You know, um, at the right time, in the right place, Shakespeare introduces the names of the conspirators to the audiences. That is the technique used by Shakespeare here. That's why Shakespeare makes Sinna take out the name of a conspirator. The conspirator, that conspirator who is waiting for Cassius in Pompey's theatre. See, to find you out, who's that? Metallus Simba. Who's that Metallus Simba? Metallus Simba is the name of a conspirator. Then Cassius says, no, he's not Metallus Simba. It is Casca. And he is also one of the conspirators. Cassius has very cleverly changed Casca, the fearful Casca, highly superstitious Casca into a conspirator. So Cassius says, no, it is Casca. One incorporate to our attempts. One who is incorporate. One who has joined hands with us in our attempt of removing Caesar. Then Cassius asks him a question. Sinna, am I not stayed for? Sinna, are you waiting for me? Are you not waiting for me in Pompey's theatre? Is the question put by, asked by Cassius? And Sinna doesn't answer that. Sinna is just looking at Casca. And then suddenly Sinna remembers Brutus also. I, said, I mean Sinna remembers the fearful sights, the unnatural sights. Even he and two or three Romans have seen on that terrible night. Look at the Cassius asks him, am I not stayed for Sinna? Then Sinna says, I am glad. Look at this. There is no coherence we say. Coherence is, supposing, supposing a student asks me, Sir, have you had your coffee? What should, what should be my answer? Yes, I have had, I should say. Yes, I have had my coffee. Supposing a student, student asks me, have you had your coffee? If I say, the cat is dead. If I say, the cat is dead. Is there any coherence between what the student wants from me and what I have given him. There is no coherence here. There is no coherence here because Sinna is observing. Sinna's eyes are riveted, as it were, fixed up upon Casca. Sinna says, I am glad on it. I am happy that even Casca has joined hands with me. And suddenly Sinna talks about the fearful night. He says, oh, Cassius. What a fearful night is this. And there are two, there is two or three of us have seen strange sights. There's two or three of us have seen strange sights like Casca has seen. Strange sights are unnatural sights. Even Sinna has seen. And even Sinna to some extent is superstitious. That's why even he is afraid of these fearful sights or strange sights. He says, I am glad on it. Oh, what a fearful night is this. There's two or three of us have seen strange sights. Then Cassius is upset because Cassius has asked one question and Sinna is answering with something else. Then Cassius repeats the question. Am I not stayed for? Tell me, Sinna. Am I not stayed for? You tell me, answer me this question, Sinna. Are you not waiting for me in Pompey's theatre? Then Sinna says, yes, you are. Yes, people are waiting for you. Then immediately Sinna talks about Brutus. Sinna says, oh, Cassius, 
Everybody has come with us. And everybody, most of these Romans have joined hands with us. And they're waiting for us in Pompey's porch or Pompey's theatre. But I want one thing. If that noble Brutus is with us, then we could do wonders, he says. He becomes sentimental about having Brutus on their side. Who? Sinner. Look at this. Yes, you are. Oh, Cassius. If you could but win the noble Brutus to our side. Oh, Cassius, you have won many people to our side. But kindly win Brutus also to our side. Because whatever, you see, when Brutus leads, when Brutus becomes the leader of this, this, this conspiracy, and Brutus' words have a lot of, you know, respect in the eyes of the Romans. And when, if Brutus becomes a leader of these conspirators, when they assassinate, after they assassinate Caesar, if Brutus gives the reason to the people why they had to kill Caesar, then people would believe in whatever Brutus says. Without Brutus, these conspirators cannot survive after killing Caesar. They need to have Brutus you know, as a leader. And Brutus is like an alchemist. Brutus is like a magician, you know. In olden days, the myth says, this alchemist has, that, has the power, the, the, this alchemist had the power of changing useless matter into gold base matter into gold. He's, he was called an al al alchemist. And Brutus is like an alchemist. Because they are going to commit an offense now. They are going to murder, kill Caesar and that is going to be an offense. And that offense would look like a useful thing that offense would look like a virtuous thing. That offense of killing Caesar would look like virtue, would look like worthiness only if Brutus leads them. Because Brutus's face has that value. He has that face value of changing that offense to look like a virtuous, a good thing, you know. A patriotic thing, an honorable thing. The most honorable thing on earth of, you know, protecting their country from a dictator called Caesar. That's why Sina says, Oh Cassius, if we could but win the noble Brutus to our party, to our group. And Cassius, look at Cassius. Cassius doesn't speak to Sina in front of Casca. Cassius takes Sina aside to some to, uh, to some different place, a little away from Casca. Because Cassius doesn't want Casca to overhear whatever goes on between Cassius and Sina. So Cassius is so careful. That's why he is a great observer, dear friend. Friends, Cassius says, why, 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 be content, be content. Keep quiet, he says. Don't say it loudly. Casca might overhear this. Just keep your mouth shut. Be you content. Then he says, good Sina, do one thing. You leave it to me. To bring Casca, Brutus to outside, you leave it to me. Be content. And now you have to do what I am going to ask you to do. Then he says, good Sina, take this paper. He gives three papers, three anonymous letters 
as if they are written by the citizens of, citizens of Rome. He gives them to Sina. He says, Good Sina, take this paper. Look, you lay it in the Peter's chair. Look, you lay it in the Peter's chair where Brutus may but find it. Brutus will definitely find this paper if you put it in the Praetor's chair. Praetor is a is the position of a judge or a magistrate. Caesar has given this position to Brutus, you know, of uh, uh, you know giving justice to people. He's a, he's also a magistrate. He's like a minister to Caesar already. And therefore, therefore, Cassius requests Sina, take this paper and look you late in the preacher's chair where Brutus may but find it. Gives him one. Takes out one more says, and throw this in at his window. And throw this into Brutus's window. Third one, he takes out the third one and says, set this up with wax upon old Brutus's statue. And set this up with wax. You know, you stick this third letter upon Brutus's ancestor's statue with wax. I'll read out the entire passage, just go through. Be you cut and good sinner, take this paper. Look you late in Peter's chair where Brutus but may but find it. And throw this in at his window. Set this up with wax upon old Brutus's statue. And all this done, repair to Pompey's porch where you shall find us. And these dishes, Brutus and Tribunius there. Look at Cassius. Now Shakespeare makes Cassius take out the names of the other two conspirators who are waiting for Cassius in Pompey's theatre. Sinna takes out the name of Metilla Simba. And now Cassius takes out the name of another two conspirators called Decius Brutus. Decius Brutus is a great flatterer, you know, a great, a great flatterer. I'll talk about Decius Brutus, uh, you know, when I, when the story progresses. And also Trebonius. There is one more person called Trebonius who is also a conspirator. Look at Cassius, he says, he gives one paper, asks him to, you know, Keep that in Brutus's chair. He gives one more paper, one more letter. Ask Sina to throw it into Brutus's wind house, the window of Brutus's house, and gives a third letter and says that he has to stick this letter with wax upon Brutus, the statue of Brutus's ancestor, that is Lucius Junius Brutus. And Cassius says. And all this done, after doing all these things, repair to Pompey's porch. Repair means return. Return to Pompey's theatre. And if you come there, you will find us. Where you shall find us. Then he is asked, Sino, is Decius, Brutus and Trebonius there? Then Sina says, all, oh, everybody is waiting for you, but Metilus Simba. Because Metilus Simba has gone to your house, Cassius, in search of you. And he has gone to seek you at your house. Well, I will hide and so bestow these papers as you bade me. Then Sina says, I will have to hurry. I will hide. I will hurry up and bestow. Put these papers into Brutus's house as you have requested me. And I will go to straight away to Pompey's theatre where I will meet you. Then Sina goes away. When Sina goes away, exit. Then Cassius says, that done, repair to Pompey's theatre. Cassius says, after doing that, after dropping these three letters into Brutus's house, come to Pompey's theatre. Then Sina goes away. After Sina goes away, Cassius comes to Casca. Kaiska is standing at some distance. Now he speaks to Kaiska. He says, Come, Kaiska. You and I will yet be before day see Brutus at his house. Three parts of me will, 
three parts of him is ours already and the man entire upon the next encounter yields him ours he says come cast up before it is still night before the day breaks we will have to meet brutus and be sure of him let us know whether brutus is willing to join us or not look at cashus he says three parts of three parts of him is ours already cashus he say i have already won three parts of brutus's mind mind to us on our side and the man entire the entire brutus will be ours in our next meeting with brutus three parts of him is ours already and the man entire upon the next meeting yields him ours he will become ours upon our next meeting let's go then casca gives us very beautifully talks about the character of brutus if you want to talk up uh, right the character of brutus you better use these lines these words uttered by casca casca says oh he sits high in all people's hearts yes cashius we have to win brutus on to our side because brutus sits high in all people's hearts romans respect brutus very highly and now casca you know compares brutus to a magician about which i have already spoken to you and that which would appear offense in us what is that offense killing of caesar and that which would appear offense to us his face brutus face like richest alchemy his face has that magic of an alchemist who could turn the base matter into gold and his countenance like rich alchemy his face will change our roughens to virtue and to worthiness his face has that power that magical power to change the roughens of killing caesar into appearing like virtue and worthiness then cassius says yes 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 casca you are right him and his worth and our great need of him you have right well conceited you are very well thought of conceited means thinking about you are very very well thought of brutus his worth and our great need of brutus yes you are correct and so let us go now don't you think we have to meet brutus now in his house for it is after midnight it's already time it's after midnight and before the day before day breaks we will awake him and be sure of him let's go and if brutus is asleep we will go and wake him up and let us be sure of his support to us come let's go before the day breaks we have to meet him because in the morning caesar support us the senators are thinking of crowning caesar in every place except in italy casca had already said these things so casca sorry cassius takes casca to pompey's uh, theater and from there all the conspirators in the same night go to brutus's house to meet him and to plan out to check out a plan as to how they should assassinate caesar the following morning and here we come to the end of act 1 and let us see what happens in act 2 the uh, act 2 takes place in brutus's house and let us see what happens in brutus's house in my next video okay thank you so much god bless you all see you in my next video bye bye